Diversification is one of the most important topics in investing, but what does it mean? Let me tell you what it means to me, and I guarantee it's much more than you'll hear from any high street financial advisor. Most textbooks on investing tell us that it's sensible to spread our risk through diversification. I don't know about you, but almost every book and every expert seems to have a, a different idea about what diversification actually means. If you talk to the typical financial advisor, it means so much in this UK stock market fund and so much in that UK stock market fund. Their knowledge of other asset classes is severely restricted, so they never seem to get on the radar. And there's another fundamental reason why they fail to tell you about many of the asset classes available to you. Professional indemnity insurance. Because you're paying them for advice, you can sue them if the advice they give turns out to be wrong or bad. So they only talk about investments for which they can get professional indemnity cover. Which brings us back to UK stock market funds. They're encouraged in this myopic approach by the Financial Conduct Authority, which takes a simplistic view that anything they regulate is safe, while anything outside their remit is risky. In the Elite Investor Club, we take a completely different approach. As a global network of sophisticated investors, we take personal ownership of our investment portfolio and are prepared to look far and wide for the best opportunities. Andrew Craig's company, Plain English Finance, deals with the regulated side, while my company, Wealth Invest, covers the unregulated opportunities. We believe a well-balanced portfolio will feature the best opportunities in both the regulated and unregulated side of the investment universe. On the regulated side, we're looking for great performance with reasonable fees and the most tax-efficient vehicles for investment. That obviously leads us into NICERs, where you can shelter £15,000 a year from income and capital gains tax, £30,000 if you're a couple. Within that, we're looking for funds that own assets across a wide range of countries, currencies and industry sectors. Andrew has uncovered some funds that really meet these criteria well, and we'll be sharing them at the Wealth Summit in November. It really makes sense to use your nicer allowance each year. I know several ISA millionaires who won't pay a penny in tax when they take their funds out. And that's very different to what happens with SIPs, self-invested personal pensions. With a SIP, you get the sugar fix of tax relief when you make a contribution, but when you come to take the money out in retirement, only a quarter of it is tax-free. Obviously, the plan is that your investments will grow to be worth a lot more when you come to withdraw them than they were when you put the money in. So it makes a lot more sense to have that tax relief on the way out rather than on the way in. Also, touch wood, NICERs have not become the political football that pensions have. So there's not been the interference, the Gordon Brown tax grabs, or the lifetime limits that we've seen do so much damage to the attractiveness of the UK private pension system these last 10 or 15 years. So if NICERs are the best vehicle, the crucial decision is what funds you put them in. When I interviewed Mark Dampier from Hargreaves Lansdowne recently, he said that 90% of actively managed funds are rubbish. Let's, let's be frank, most active funds are rubbish. Mm. So you've got probably 90% at least of the market. Which is, and I can see that to the passive people every time. Yeah. Um, but they, don't, they never actually concede anything uh, at all. This is, this is what annoys me. So I think that's absolutely right. Mm. But there are some very good fund managers around. And surely those are the ones you should be trying to spend your time and concentrate on. So if you're a novice investor... Passive funds with low fees, such as exchange-traded funds or ETFs, make the most sense. If you're an experienced, sophisticated investor, then it pays to look for the handful of managers who can consistently outperform the market so that their higher fees are justified. If you'd like an introduction to Andrew Craig so his team can take a look at your regulated portfolio, just contact me on graham at eliteinvestorclub.com and I'll put you in touch with each other. 
Next week, I'll talk about some of the unregulated asset classes that should be in a sophisticated investor portfolio. If your advisors have given you a very narrow view on diversification, be very careful out there. If you think it's safe to trust currencies backed by nothing more than the say-so of politicians, be very careful out there.